the expression of the king's character. That, that, that's what it is. And he gave it to us so that we, uh, we can benefit because he loves us, because he knows that it's a blessing. And, and the law, already all the laws of the Lord has been written in our heart by the Holy Spirit. That's why we don't go about observation of the law or trying to keep up with the law or what it says. But the Holy Spirit in us does because right. he's perfect. Amen. So there are uh, these laws of the standard by which righteousness is measured. We are the righteousness of God. And the character of Christ defines spiritual maturity. See, in the law, long time ago, they defined spiritual maturity uh, depending on how obedient you were to the law, on how you made it so perfect. And nobody can, right? That's why they had to have the sacrifices, because they couldn't do that. And there was a punishment, which was death. But the death of the Lord Jesus Christ the sacrifice that he paid did all this for us. Amen. So we're free and we live in the law of life and liberty. Amen. 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 Thank you. Amen. Wow. Good stuff. She is uh, giving us a foundation, giving us something to build on as we share each week. And we're in week number three. This is exciting. And tonight, I want to share with you some things that are foundational. How many of you know we need foundation before we start getting revelation? <laughs> and so, uh, sometimes these things may not seem all that exciting, but we need to understand basics like character. And I think Liz mentioned that just a little bit. Tonight, in our Kingdom series, A City Set on a Hill, Our Place is Lights, we're in class number three, as I said, the character of a kingdom ambassador. We are ambassadors. Yes. But it's the character of a kingdom ambassador that determines how bright your light will be. It's not your gifts. It's not your talent. It's character. Right. And sometimes, you know, we don't hear as much on that as we should at some places in the world. So, so far we shared from Matthew, our theme verse, Matthew 5.14, you are the light of the world. Amen. Amen. You are the light of the world. A city, a government that is set on a hill cannot be hid. So, we've talked about in week number one and week number two, taking our places as lights. Last week we talked about lights. We are lights. So, let me pick up from there and let's move on. Are y'all ready? Yes. That's right. I'm excited. It's not how gifted we are, as I said. It's not how gifted we are that determines the strength of our life. It's the character of the king in us. And I've seen too many men and women of God fall because they didn't spend enough time on developing character. Uh, you know, God wants us to be, a, be character, have character, not be a caricature. <laughs> Sometimes I think people are caricatures of the last thing they went through. But we're supposed to develop character. Amen? Amen. So let's look at this. Character is defined as a distinctive pattern of behavior. Right there on your sheet. And you can download them as well if you're watching online at rickkendall.org, Destiny Group. Character is a distinctive pattern of behavior. It's a disciplined quality. Again, this is very foundational tonight, but then we'll get to the shouting next week. I don't know, you might shout over this too. <laughs> it is also integrity. Everybody say integrity. Integrity. Integrity is vital for longevity. We've got to develop that, char that character and integrity. The biblical word for character is stature. The biblical word for character is stature. Now, character is kind of like honor that we talked about in the last class, the last course we did. Character is, God, is a God-ordained blueprint, but it must be cultivated. Amen. You're born with character, 
but it doesn't mean it's automatically operational. So, character has a God-ordained blueprint, but it must be cultivated and constructed by what? Process. Or our walk. It says in the Bible so much about our walk, doesn't it? Whenever you see the word walk, if you want to jot it down in your notes, it means process. Everything with God is a process. So character has to be cultivated and constructed, developed. One of the reasons the purity of our light is so important is because in Matthew chapter 16 and verse 19, he says, I'm going to give you keys. Amen. Amen. I'm going to build my church. How many of you know the scripture? Mm -hmm. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. What was he building that church on? The revelation. You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. He said, Peter, upon this rock I will build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give you keys. But we need to understand character before he hands us the keys. So let's talk about three areas of character that are going to take you through some of the developments of further authority. God talks about the man. And when we say man, how many of you know it means woman too? The man, the mandate, and number three, the mission. The man of character, the mandate of character, and the mission of character. So let's start with the man. This is the protocol, and protocol means order. You don't see protocol in the Bible, but how many of you see order? Yeah. Amen. That's right. So I, I say it this way, protocol is the pro through to his call. You know, God actually gives you a way in to what he's called you to do and be. So the man, the protocol order of character. Is the, is the source of our light. We're going to talk about the source of our light, the strength of our light, and the saturation of our light. You see those three things on your sheet? So let's talk first about the man, then the mandate, then the mission. Are you all good? So the man involves the protocol or the order or process of character. It, it has to do with the source of our light. God is more interested in who we are than what we do. Amen. Amen. He is he is actually developing more about who you are than he is about what you do. Because if he develops who you are, then you will be equipped in what you do. So let's talk about the man. There is a process. And by the way, let me say to the people watching and, and everybody here, I know sometimes we'd love to skip some stuff. I mean, because, you know, we, we'd like to get on with it, you know. Do I really have to go through all this training, through all this stuff? Yeah, because you don't want to be out there in your polka dotted underwear. <laughs> Amen? Spiritually speaking, Kim. <laughs> I'm talking about, how many of you want your whole armor on? And know how to walk in it? You ever seen some of those old movies where the knight can't walk in his suit? Yeah. And they're clunking around? Well, we got too many clunkers. <laughs> God wants us to get some basics right. So we can begin to go into the deeper stuff. And man, we got some deeper stuff coming up. Amen. Amen. So, the man. Here's the protocol to processing you before what you do. God is processing you before what you do. And here's the list. You see it on your sheet. And I know some of you do have the sheet out there and some don't. But I'll just kind of go over it very uh, as much as possible with you. First of all, there's covering. And everybody say process. Process. And how many of you know that means A, B, C, D? It means not C, D, B, A. <laughs> well, I like this part of the process better. Well, guess what? The part you don't like is probably what you need the most. There you go. That's right. So we've got to have covering, number one. Mm. Now we're talking about the man or the woman. Amen? Yeah. 
Amen. We're not even talking about the mandate or the mission yet. We're talking about developing us. Amen. And I, over the years, I've had the honor of mentoring or counseling a lot of ministers and a lot of men and women of God. And if I were to say anything is missing, it's this area of character. Because they shot to some kind of stardom or uh, success before they were ready. And they didn't know how to handle it. So we need covering. There are four stages that we go through. Sheep. You see the bright yellow there? Sheep, servants, sons, and saints. Sheep, servants, sons, and saints. Now, you know, according to the way God views us, we're all four of these. Right. This is you never stop being his sheep, am I right? right. You never stop being his servants, right? right? You never stop being sons and daughters of God. You never stop being saints. But your progress and your journey has you in different stages of this. So, sheep need covering. But listen, so do saints. Because even though we may be in the saint stage, it doesn't mean you stop being a sheep. Amen. But it means you're going to find that you gravitate towards certain things. Because of the level of maturity that you're at. So let's go through this. Here's the protocol for processing you before what you do. First, covering. You need a covering, not a smothering. Yeah. Amen. And that's the sheep stage. What are sheep? They're righteous, but they're babies. And we can't stay babies forever as far as where we're at. So I put it this way. Sheep are the embracing stage. <laughs> babies. And then, though, there comes a point where you recognize, hey, I've grown a little more, and my light is getting a little brighter. Amen. Mm -hmm. So now I find I'm in the servant stage. I'm still a sheep as far as the sheep of his pasture, sheep under covering, but now I want some instruction. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. How many remember when you got to that stage? And he said, you know what, okay, uh, dependency isn't just a thing for anymore. I, I need some instruction. Yep. I need to wean off of some things. Mm -hmm. So instruction equals the servant level. And that's when anointings and gifts begin to be enabled. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Then after instruction, you begin to say, you know what, now it's not just good enough for me to sit and always just be hearing it. I want some training. So the next stage is training. That's the sonship. You're saying, wait a minute, man, I begin to recognize I'm a son of the Most High God. Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm a sheep and I'm a servant, but now I'm taking on the sonship. Jesus was always the Son of God, right? That's right. But he was under tutors because he needed to be trained. So the training and sonship is more the refining and defining of who you are. Good? Absolutely. This is the equipping stage. We're not only equipped to refine and define our gifts, but we're equipped to refine and define who we are. But then comes release. That's the saint stage. Now, saint doesn't mean I've arrived. In fact, someone who's a saint I found is still more humble than ever. Amen? Because they say, oh man, if it weren't for God. <laughs> you know, I don't know how he uses me. So, so it doesn't mean that you're all that in a bag of chips. It means that now you're at a stage where you can be released. And the more you release someone, the more they'll come back to you. The more you try to hold on to them, just so that you can keep them in a sheep stage, the more they want to leave. I'm just telling you from, from experience. So we may think we're ready for the saint stage. We may think we're ready for the sun stage. Give me a microphone. Come on. But 
One thing, you might want to write this down in your notes, one thing that tells me you're not ready is you're more anxious to do something than you're anxious to be something. You're more anxious to do something spectacular then you are interested in being something. Good one. So, since I need covering, I need instruction, I need training, I need release, as a sheep, servant, son, and a saint, as embracing, enabling, equipping, and empowering, then I must need leadership. So it says in Ephesians, some of you know this very well, again, it's very foundational, but it's good for you. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 11 through 14, and he gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, and some teachers. He gave fivefold gifts. The gift is more of the function. These are also offices, but here it's talking about the function of a gift. So the leadership that you have in your church or in the ministry is going to help equip you through one of these aspects of the gifts God made available to you. Amen. Look at this. Apostles are sent to set order. He gave some. Apostles. Sent to set order. By the way, the word apostle, apostolos, is another word for ambassador. Hmm. So some, we're all ambassadors, but we're not all apostles. In other words, we're not all at the level of an apostle in the sense of corporate. Does that make sense? But we are all ambassadors in the sense we're sent to set. Yes, yes. Sent to set. set order. order. Prophets see to say. Apostles are sent to set. Prophets see to say. They help you see what God is saying. Yes. <laughs> Do you see what I'm saying? <laughs> we need to understand it's more than just positions in a church to say, look, I have an office. These are gifts, functions, leadership that God puts in a church to help us find out who we are, our character. I need to be, I can't be sent unless I'm set. Amen. And if I'm not set, and sent, I can't see what God's saying. Mm. Yet prophets are the most neglected sometimes in the church world. Because the apostles and the prophets are, feel like I clash. No, you don't clash. You, you're actually a compliment. Amen. To help build the house. So, are we good so far? Absolutely. Am I not going too fast? Apostles sent to set, prophets see to say, evangelists seek to sow. They're sowing the word. They're out there. Teachers shape, they shape and shift you. They shift your thinking. Sometimes I've heard people say, uh, well, I don't want to go to church there because my pastor just doesn't seem to have any compassion for me. But they need to see it might be because the pastor is actually more gifted than the apostolic. Apostles don't like to sit and listen to your problems. <laughs> Did you hear that? <laughs> Not because of their personality, but because they're gifting. I'm sent to set. Look, I told you what to do about that problem, you, you know, three times. That's pretty much the limit, and I get off and do it. Now, a pastor who has a pastoral gifting... They will listen to you all day long. In fact, they'll say more details. More details. Because I'm here for you. You know what I'm saying? A little over the top, but not much. 
And teachers, have you ever been to a church that is just a teacher oriented? The teacher, the leader is, is all teacher. And all they want to do is teach you. And then they might even forget to take the offering or an altar call. They're just like, oh, that's right, go home now. Because, because that's their gifting. Now, they can lead a corporate church, amen, but they need to have people around them that will bring the rest of that. Can you say amen? So, you know, I've also been to some churches where it's all prophetic, and it's constantly giving one word after another, and no teaching, and, and no content. So we have to have a balance, amen? Because God wants a, a balanced character. Is that good? These are gifts, but what are they for? For the perfecting point C, for the perfecting of the saints. Perfecting to do what? For the work of their ministry. First, it perfects the saints. It deals with your character. Then, for the work of their ministry. This brings unity and edification. And it says that they might come into the, the stature of the fullness of Christ. Stature, character. Let me get to the mandate. Point number two. Because we've talked about the man, the protocol, order, process of character, the source of our light. Now let's look at the mandate, the protocol of capacity. The strength of our light. Your current assignment may just be a step to get you into your greater purpose. Your current assignment may just be a step to get you into your greater purpose. Now, the reason why I say that is because sometimes we take our current assignment as our purpose. And we don't know when to shift. We don't know when things are changing. Your assignments change a lot, but your purpose stays the same. Your purpose unfolds, but your assignments progress. This is so important. The gifts and callings of God, it says in Romans 12, 29, the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. How many of you are glad for that? Amen. God has called you before what you do. I want to say it again. God has called you before what you do. Why do I say that? Because a failure doesn't eliminate your call. Okay, so here's the protocol of the mandate. I call it this simply, it's a man with a date. <laughs> How many of you have ever heard somebody say, well, in their time they did this and that? In, in his time he did this and that. What, what it meant was in the time frame of his life and his span of life or her, her life. So it's a man with a God-ordained date. It's a span of something he wants accomplished in your time. First of all, God starts with the man. Again, men or women. Who I am? Who are you? Well, I'm the pastor. Well, I'm not me before that. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm a mom before that. Who are you? What's your identity? Well, I don't know. It's wrapped up in this and that. But first we have to answer, who am I in him? Amen? Mm -hmm. So that's the person. The mandate begins with the person. Who am I? Then a mantle. Do you see that on your sheet? Yes. Why I am. Or the purpose for the person. And why you are isn't just what you're going to do. Why you are is your purpose that comes from who you are. Then the mandate. When I manifest. Process. It's the process. And remember, we had all this sheep, servant, son, state, saint state stuff. <laughs> Now we're getting to the mandate. The man, the mantle, the mandate. When do I manifest? In other words, the process of manifestation. Then God brings a mission. And that's what I do. That's the performance. But a lot of people would love to start with mission. And they let the mission say who they are. But how many of you know if the mission goes south, you think you did too? Then the measure, the weight I carry. We should not try to carry more weight 
than God has called us to carry in the Spirit. Did everybody hear that? Yes. Yes. I want to be a heavy hitter. What does that even mean? What does that mean? Mm-hmm. If, if you're walking in God and have the anointing, how many of you know it's heavy? <laughs> you're a heavy hitter. I know, but there's levels of things you may do. But see, this is why God is more interested in who we are. Because out of that will come what you do. Some of you heard me say this a lot in our last course. So I am anointed. See you there in the little box. How many of you know I put all this on here so because you're going to have to read this a lot more. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let it sink in because this is this is God this is speaking good. to you. Good. You're anointed, you're appointed, you're assigned, and then you're activated. Hmm. Protocol. Yes. The order of God. Awesome. Wait upon the Lord and he will renew your strength. Amen. Submit under authority and you will know authority. Submit yourself under the hand of God, and He will exalt you in due time. Come on, somebody. Amen? Amen. It's called order. Amen. You say, yeah, but I was under the thumb of somebody terrible. That was them. That's not God. Amen. 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 Before God instituted you, He constituted you. Amen? Amen? Before He instituted you on the planet, He constituted your success. Amen. So... I'm anointed because I'm constituted. I'm appointed because I'm consecrated. Then I'm assigned by confirmation. Mm. How many of you know when you were, if if any of you were ministers that were ordained in an ordination ceremony, it really wasn't them ordaining you. God ordained you before you were born. Yes, amen. But they were just confirming it. Yes. Amen? amen? So, you know, this is so important, but some people, again, want to be confirmed before they recognize even who they are. Mm-hmm. You know, we're not supposed to be copies of a copy of a copy of a copy. Mm-hmm. I'm going to do what that minister did, and that minister did, and that minister did, and that minister did. And God says, I don't make copies, I make originals. Yeah. <laughs> amen? But you learn Mm -hmm. from these that have gone before us. Okay, so we've got the mandate. I'm anointed. I'm appointed. I'm I'm constituted. I'm consecrated. I'm confirmed, assigned. And now I'm activated and commissioned. We've got to know we're not representing us or our little call. We're representing the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. We are representing a kingdom government. Amen? Yes. Not just an offside religion and a subculture. We're representing the one who created the whole thing. Amen. Amen. So this is why, even though it seems like it takes a long time sometimes, it's good. Because it's better that you know who you are. And don't get me wrong, I believe in performance and excellence in performance. But that'll be no problem. That's right. If you take the time to develop who you are. And by the way, I'm still finding out who I am. Are you all still on the journey? So we've got the man. We've got the mandate. Now the mission. The protocol of what? Commission. The saturation of our light. So we've found out the source of our light. The strength of our light. And now the saturation of our light. I'm an ambassador. You're an ambassador. In the sense of we are uh, saints sent. To declare the kingdom of God. Amen. So ambassadors are, as you see on your sheet there, governmental officials. Literally an ambassador is a passage through doors. An ambassador is literally passages through doors. When you come into the the awareness that the maturity in you has taken on, a commission. You know what? You don't even have to worry about telling people you have authority. They'll see it. Mm-hmm. Come on, somebody. Amen? Yeah. Amen. Somebody you always have to tell somebody, yeah, hey, I'm the authority here. Yeah. They doubt it. Mm-hmm. You know? Because they, they don't even think they do. So, when you really have authority, you don't have to tell too many people you have authority. Because it's God-ordained. 
and now you're in a commission. Now you're going to begin to saturate the earth with the light of the gospel. So ambassadors or passages through doors, you now have come to a place to where you open things. Oh, come on, somebody. Is that you? You open things. Amen. Passages through doors. You open things that nobody even knew was there. You are a government official. Mm. Everybody say, I'm a government official. I'm a government I'm a official. official. Salute your government official next to you. Amen. Salute. 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 Now, we can sit and call ourselves ambassadors all day long. But an ambassador does not fully function until on foreign soil. So we shouldn't complain about our job or about you know the people in our neighborhood because you're not fully activated or functioning as an ambassador until you're on foreign soil. Yeah. Ambassador door. Ambassador. How many of you believe Jesus said, I am the door? Yes. And now we have the door in us who gives us authority to open doors. God only gives keys. Here we go back to the keys as we wrap this up. <laughs> God only gives keys to his ambassadors in training and reigning. Can you repeat that, Dr. Rick? God only gives keys to his ambassadors, those that are in training and reigning. What does that mean? You don't have to be fully mature for him to give you the keys, you have to just understand the importance of the keys. In Matthew 16, 19, keys literally are defined as his principles. His power to open and shut things. Hmm. Literally, hold me down, I'm excited. His Keys are passports and visas. All right. He has given us passports and visas to get us into places we never dreamed we could go, to say things we never dreamed we could say, and to do things we never dreamed we could do. We could do. That's why he wants us, and again, I prayed that he would help us pay our rent before. Amen? How many of you have all prayed that prayer? But he wants us to move on into yes, opening yes. some things yes. that are beyond us. Can you say amen? Yes. But in our measure. Yes. Something that takes him to do. So let me say this again. Matthew 16, 19 talks about the keys of the kingdom. Now, write this down. I don't know if I put this or not. But he did not say, I give you the keys to the kingdom. He did not say it. He did not say it that I give you the keys to the kingdom. But I give you the keys of the kingdom. Why? Because the kingdom is already open to the church. Would you all agree? In fact, we live in the kingdom. I don't need the keys to the kingdom. But he says, I'm going to trust you now as those that are mature and those that are in training to have the keys of the kingdom. Why? Because now you can open things in heaven and on earth. Yes. Yes. Come on, somebody. Amen. Yes. Yes. You now have come to a point where you represent the king in such yes. maturity Hallelujah. that you understand the importance of what you open and shut. Yes. Yes. So keys are passports and visas. Keys are what open your light. The keys or the passports and visas, open God's light through you to saturate the earth. Wow. Here is, and we're going to cover wisdom on one night. How many of you would be excited about covering some wisdom? Amen? But here's some wisdom. God always conceals before he reveals. He has to. 
We think revelation or light is all about shining everywhere. But God always conceals before he reveals. So he says, I need, I need stewards who know how to handle keys. Because there's a time to shine the light bright. Saturation of God's light isn't about just dumping it everywhere. Amen. But saturation of God's light is recognizing he always conceals it before he reveals it. Because light is processing in us first before it comes through us. Habakkuk 2.14 says, For the earth shall be filled with not just the glory of the Lord, but what? The knowledge. The, knowledge, the light of the glory. The revelation of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. How do the waters cover the sea? They don't just sit on top of it. They saturate. 